Okay. Uh, I was going to record a uh, Bearded Dragon Care video, but uh, I wanted to do this video uh, before I did the Bearded Dragon Care video. And uh, it's uh, going to try to be a little bit on the serious side. I want y'all to meet. This is Brutus. This is Brutus. This is this is my pit bull. This guy right here. Somebody actually abandoned him. We've had him for probably a, a year and a half or two years now. I think two years. But they literally abandoned him in a parking lot of a thriftway while we were doing a. While I was doing sound at a, an event in the parking lot, somebody actually dumped him out behind the store because they didn't want him. So what's messed up about that is that he is the sweetest dog you will ever meet. And if I don't know if you, the camera can see, but if you look at his face, his whole bottom lip has been torn off. His whole and his missing teeth. And he's got scars all over his face. So that means that they were they were fighting him or they were using him for a bait dog or something. But he is he is by far one of the sweetest dogs you'll ever meet. Uh, the whole idea behind this video is that uh, is to uh, I was going to talk about uh, people getting animals that they don't want or mistreating animals. It's really sorry. If, if you don't want an animal, don't get an animal. If you can't take care of the animal, there's plenty of people that are willing to take the animal off your hands. Proof in point, Brutus. They just dumped him in the parking lot. And, well, he's a big pit bull. The people people generally have the idea that pit bulls are mean dogs. Uh, Brutus would be my first pit bull to own, but my cousin has owned... Several, like six different pit bulls, and they've all been big weenies. And the meanest dog I have ever owned was I had a Rhodesian Ridgeback. And she was a sweet, sweet dog. And the guy that got rid of her worked at the prison over here, and he got rid of her because he said that she was she would growl at his kids. Well, what he didn't tell us is whenever I went to go get her, he had her outside, chained to a tree, on a huge freaking toe chain. And the number one th thing, to, I don't care what breed the dog is, as soon as you put a chain on, big old fat chain on them, and you chain them up outside, the area that they can reach in their chain, they'll assume that's their territory. Brutus, come here. Hey. Brutus. Come here. Come here. Let's go back outside. Let's go back outside. Another uh, point I have to make is this is my Chihuahua. This is a, her name's Baby. This dog right here, my buddy Bart found her, him and his girlfriend, well now it's his wife, <laughs> found her running around on the street covered in gasoline. I mean, she was soaked in gasoline. I don't have any idea why someone would soak a dog in gasoline, but he found her soaked in gasoline. We've had baby for about five years now. And why would anybody do that to a dog? I mean, literally, especially like this dog. This dog's a big weenie. And she's mad because they're bringing the big dog inside, so she's all acting weird. Uh, I understand if you have an animal and you can't keep it because you don't have time for it. Uh, to give you an idea of like where I stand on like the animal thing is like like I said they just dumped my big dog off and just dumped him they were they just got rid of him that little chihuahua they they literally whenever my friend gave her to me he said we found this dog running around and she smells like gasoline. Well, she was soaked in gasoline. Like somebody was going to light her on fire. Now, my wife's dog, 
radar. He is some kind of terrier mix. He's got a, he's real furry. Uh, that's one of the the dogs that we got. That's uh, we kind of it was another dog that we took in, but that was my buddy and my guitar player for my band. Uh, it was his dog, and what his the deal was with it with his dog was is that he lived an hour away from here from where he works here in Hobbs. He would have to drive an hour to get over here to go to work. Work all day long, drive all the way back over there. So the dog was at the house for probably 10, 12 hours by itself. So what he ended up doing is he asked me if I wanted the dog because he didn't have enough time for the dog. The dog was at the house for 10, 12 hours. He still comes over here all the time. The dog loves the living crap out of him. Loves that likes him better than likes my wife. Uh Another rescue that we have is my iguana. My iguana was uh, kind of a weird thing. The 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 guy that gave her to me actually rescued her from somebody else. What what it was was the first owner had her in a fifty five gallon aquarium. Well, my if you uh, if you've seen my videos, my iguana is pushing. She's like three foot. Three foot ten or something. She's almost almost four foot long, like maybe a couple inches shorter, than foot four foot long. Uh, when he gave her to me, she was probably three and a half, three and a half or three foot eight. Uh, you can't keep an animal that size in a fifty five gallon tank, and so he rescued her and he put her in a bird cage, a pretty big, you know, pretty good sized bird cage. I'd I'd say it was. Two by four by four or something, but that's still really small for a lizard that big. Uh, what actually happened with the lizard is he bring he bring me the iguana in a pet taxi, <laughs> and how he got her in the pet taxi I have no idea because this guy seemed like he was a was deathly afraid of this iguana. Uh, he had rescued her from the previous owners and tried to take care of her. And the one bad thing he did was he was feeding her iguana uh, diet pellets, which are mostly dried stuff. And the problem with like feeding your iguana dry food is you have to make sure that the humidity is up in the tank because the, the dry food actually dries them out more. And a lot of that, the dry food, if it's got, if you don't pick the food, the right dry food, it actually will cause... Uh, liver problems for a lot of lizards. Uh, so, like, my guano was a rescue, and uh, he just straight up could not care for the lizard. Like, he was like, I can't take care of this lizard. I don't have, I don't have enough room for it. Don't know what to do with it. That was one of those rescue situations where he he didn't quite know what he was getting into. He was trying to do a good thing. When he got the lizard, he realized that iguanas are not. For everybody, they're not a lizard that you just go out and buy and you could just have. Um, it's better to get, like, say, if you are going to go over a iguana, research research any of the animals you get. Buy all the stuff you're going to need for them. Set up their enclosure. Set up everything first. All the stuff first. Do all your research. Then get the animal and put it in its new home. It's, it's e just easier that way. The, the iguana was dumped on us, and luckily I had a big, I used to have a uh, Sudan plated lizard. Uh, I had him for a long time. He uh, he had a big screen tank, one of those big uh, Ripper Breeze tanks. So luckily, I she stayed in there for two days, and me and my cousin went to the hardware store and bought the wood to build her tank. And her tank right now is... It's two and a half foot deep by a little bit, I think it's four and a half feet wide by six foot four, I think. And that's a, that's a perfect size for her right now. I don't think she's going to get too much bigger than what she is. Uh, and one of the bearded dragons that I got, Jack, he is a, 
He's another animal that we took in because my buddy Matt worked so much and he was moving to an, an apartment and he didn't have room for the tank and he works in the oil field so he sometimes he's gone for 17 18 hours and he was like I don't want to leave the lizard at the house in a tank with a timer on its tank and not pay attention to it and then when I get home I forget about it so and I mean he had he had the bearded dragon since it was a week old. He got his bearded dragon about the same time. Probably like three months before I got my wife's bearded dragon. Uh, and I mean, he took care of it so well that he's he's a big, big bearded dragon. He's probably pushing, uh, you know, topping up 16, 16 inches, which is, that's huge for a bearded dragon. Uh I figured I'd just make this video, uh, that way I could, uh, that way I could explain, you know, if you have animals and you're an animal lover, don't get an animal if you can't take care of it. 